Awesome. Um, thank you, Chuck. Uh, I'm Noah. I'm a principal site reliability engineer for Geo Magical Labs. And like I said, I'm going to talk about our approach to Dagster. Um, our use case isn't quite the normal one for Dagster, so a quick overview of our main product. Uh, a user takes a bunch of imagery of their room using our mobile app. They upload those to our cloud stuff. We run a bunch of fancy math. We build a 3D view of their room, and then they can, in a browser or mobile app, drag virtual furniture in to see how it would look before buying. So the key points there are that it's directly customer facing, so we need it to run quickly, and there's very little margin for error because every second counts when a customer is waiting on us. Also, the fancy math that we run can get very, very fancy. Uh, some of the steps vary from little Python scripts to large C++ tools that use tens of gigabytes of RAM and require a GPU. Before we dive into the Dagster setup, let's look what we had before. For our main product, we use Celery with RabbitMQ. Each solid, to use the Dagster term, although it wasn't that before, uh, runs its own deployment in Kubernetes. And we have a custom tool to compile from a simple JSON DAG representation Canvas orchestration system that comes with Celery. We knew we wanted to keep most of the structure of our existing solids in place, both because updating them would be really costly. And honestly, that part of the system was going just fine in terms of workflow. The big problem was that our DAG limited and canvas didn't really offer much room for improvement. We've tried a couple times and it didn't work for inexplicable reasons. So canvas definitely had to go. Also, our workloads are really bursty. So anything that allows us to shut down more capacity when it's not in use helps us keep costs down, which is really nice when you're allocating giant cloud machines. Uh, and also, if we could get better run tracking with more detailed information, that would be really nice. I mean, I can write all that instrumentation myself, but if I don't have to, that's great. Uh, obviously, we found and liked Dagster. You wouldn't be hearing from me today. Uh, but in short, it ticked all of the boxes I was looking for, and anything that it didn't, we could help to improve. So the biggest thing that we're looking to improve on uh, is the thing I'm talking about today, which is a getting a scalable, stable execution layer in place. Uh, because we needed really high potential concurrency and much higher resiliency to failure, the default launcher and executor combos weren't going to cut it. We did look at Dagster Celery, since we knew we wanted Celery under the hood no matter what. Fortunately, the workflow for that more or less requires that the code for all solids lives alongside the pipeline, or at least that all solids in the pipeline uh, can be runnable together. That wouldn't really work well for us because of the widely varying hardware requirements for different solids. Uh, there's also Dagster Kubernetes, which launches Kubernetes jobs on the fly. Uh, this can be OK for infrequently executed jobs where a failure or delay doesn't have any customer facing copies consequences, but I really, really suggest that you keep Kube API server out of the hot path of your product. Uh, it's really just not built for that kind of thing. That's putting on my Kubernetes hat instead of Dagster hat. Um, I'll save some back and forth and cut to what we came up with. Um, so the normal stuff, Daggett runs as a Kubernetes deployment. That's pretty standard. Uh, and we wrote a custom launcher plugin that takes the run request, serializes it into JSON, puts that onto a Celery queue, and then each uh, Dagster workspace has a Celery daemon that is sort of the launcher daemon. So it gets those requests off of RabbitMQ, deserializes it, and acts as the executor. And then uh, we'll talk about it a little bit later. Most of our solids are also running as separate daemons like they were before um, with some proxies to get back and forth. I mentioned before, one of our big goals was being able to scale our system down when not in, when not in use. Dagster delivers that nicely. Um, the minimum system state with what I showed before uh, is just Daggett and one copy of the gRPC daemon for each workspace running. Uh, all told, that uses very few resources, almost no CPU, and just a little bit of RAM. Uh, because everything is decoupled via RabbitMQ, we use a tool called Kida to watch the queue depth in RabbitMQ and drive our auto scaling. Um, and we've updated some stuff in Kida 2.1 uh, with a bunch of new features to make this use case work better. Two important things on the Celery side, if you're going to try something like this, the messages need to stay in the queue while they're being processed so that Kita can see them for auto scaling purposes. And the way you do that in Celery is with tasks act late uh, and either reducing or disabling prefetching. So that stuff stays in the queue until it's actually been processed completely. Remote solids are pretty much our biggest deviation from normal Dagster usage. Uh, most people, like I said before, keep their solids all the same code base as the pipeline, and that works great for most people that are just running some pretty simple Python code. But we want to run all of ours as separate daemons. So the plus sides of that are great. We can tailor the execution environment, things like hardware requirements, Docker base images, sometimes even which operating systems to run on, because we have one thing that runs on Windows. Um, 
And it also means that the teams that are developing each solid can be somewhat isolated from their usage in pipelines, not completely. The use cases still matter, but they can sort of develop and release on their own schedule. We can run multiple versions of each solid in parallel, and the pipelines can pick which versions of things they want to use. So we can do sort of a gentle promotion cycle. If a new version of something isn't working great in the pipeline, um, we can go back to sending to the old version, which is still running just fine. Uh, this is a simple use case of remote solid. It looks an awful lot like a celery task because it is a celery task. Uh, there, we have some helpers to just sort of help define them more quickly. Uh, but overall, it's just normal celery. Um, each of these would be in its own uh, GitHub project, have its own CI, its own everything. Uh, we could expose multiple tasks from a single remote solid if the situation called for it, but it doesn't come up very often. Most of them have one thing that they do. But then we need to expose that remote solid into Dagster's view of the world. Uh, so we've written a decorator that extends at solid to create what I call proxy solids. And this is a short example of one. So the decorator takes all the same arguments as at solid, but some additional ones, like say which RabbitMQ this solid will live on. The first yield is yielding what arguments should be sent to the remote celery task, because usually, as you can see here, that's like extracting some data from the Dagster level arguments. And then the return from the first yield will be output from the remote solid. So whatever celery returned will end up in output there. And then after that, you can do normal Dagster stuff, data manipulation, yielding outputs, asset materializations, all that kind of stuff. Our workflow is pretty light after that. Um, each overall project has its own Git repository for the pipelines. Um, one of those will be the default pipeline in main.py. Um, that sort of defines when a customer request comes in that doesn't have an override for which pipeline to use, since they are the, the pipelines are also versioned. Um, it'll use the default one. Um, we have the solids.py for defining all of those proxy solids. Uh, and then other stuff, when we want to sort of write a new test pipeline, we'll write that in some other file. When we're happy that it's working well, we can rename it into place to be the new default. Um, or some of them are just for testing purposes or whatever and always stay in their own files forever. Um, we use the Daggett GraphQL API to integrate into our backend APIs for things like launching new executions via one of the GraphQL mutations, uh, or just like discovering which pipelines exist for admin UI purposes. Uh, as we roll out this workflow to more internal projects, the goal is for the teams that currently own the JSON-based DAG definitions to take over writing Dagster pipelines instead. They're very excited about that. As soon as I let them, they're ready for it. Uh, the current one is not great. Um, and just quickly, uh, we have all of this wrapped in a continuous deployment system via BuildKite. So any commit get, gets merged into the main branch for either a solid or a uh, pipeline will be uh, built into a container image, edited into the customized configuration, uh, pushed up into GitHub, and then deployed via Argo CD. Um, there's a little bit more complexity in some of the fancier remote solids because there's an operator because I'm that kind of nerd. Um, but overall, fairly simple, straightforward system. Just as soon as you merge it, it ends up in the system. Uh, but this whole setup isn't without issues. The biggest downside is the time to cold start a pipeline that hasn't been used lately. Uh, we have one pipeline in particular that it can take 10 to 20 minutes before things actually get underway because the machines it has to launch are fairly large and the container images are many gigabytes. Um, because uh, most of the work is in the remote solids, we also don't yet have any way to show progress or status information during a long step. Um, so in that proxy solid definition I showed before, like you can use the Dagster log before and after, but once the celery task is running, you're blocked until it comes back. There's not a whole lot that can actually happen usefully during that. Um, this makes debugging a lot harder. If something goes wrong during a, a task, we have to sort of co cross correlate between the Dagster logs and the low level Kubernetes output logs. Uh, and finally, as with any off the beaten path adventure, we've hit plenty of weird edge cases, uh, a whole bunch from Celery because it really, really doesn't like being both a consumer and producer in the same daemon. But if you're doing weird stuff, you're gonna hit weird bugs. We haven't moved our main product yet, as I've been sort of hinting at throughout this. We've been using a lot of smaller projects to develop and battle test this execution layer. And so far, things are looking very positive. Um, we can throw uh, hundreds of simultaneous runs into the system and have them come out the other side. Uh, the main bug, blocking, no, main bug blocking us from moving forward on the rollout is every now and then we do have unexplained task failures for no obvious reason. I 
think it's a rabbit MQ timeout, uh, but I need to add more debugging output and I think we'll be back on track soon. And there's still also a lot of room to improve it. Uh, the biggest thing that would improve this would be async execution support. Uh, right now, because the execution process itself is synchronous and because we want to run very high concurrency, most of the time for us, it's going to be blocked in waiting for the remote celery task to return. So we don't want to run the overhead of a separate process for every one of those. So we're using threads. Uh, we run 15 threads per workspace level worker, um, which works great, except that I don't think anyone else using Dagster is doing multi-threaded execution. Uh, and so we've run into a couple of weird bugs related to that. Uh, but a fully async executor would allow for better time sharing for both our weird use case and everyone else. Um, we'd also like to fix that incremental feedback gap or just more generally have ways for non Dagster systems to yield events into the Dagster log, um, the Dagster event framework. Um, and another thing that we're looking at is pipeline level webhooks. Um, there's been a ticket open for this recently. Uh, Right now, it's really easy to deal with successes. We just have a solid that notifies our backend system when the thing is finished. But if it fails, we have to pull GraphQL for that because uh, we don't know where it will fail. Um, and it could fail at a point where we can't define any hooks. So having a, a pipeline level hook for failures in particular would allow us to automatically notify our backend system. And maybe it shows the user an error or retries or something like that. Hopefully by now I've convinced at least some of you this is a pretty good way to run Dagster. I clearly think it is. Um, our solids and pipelines aren't public, but the core helper library is. Uh, you can look it up on GitHub, geomagical slash Dagster geomagical, but it is extremely undocumented and I'm still really frequently making major changes to it. So think of this as a place to borrow code and ideas from. Please don't try and import and use it directly. I feel like that's not gonna go well. Uh, and that's it. Um, thank you so much. And I think we'll be taking questions either in chat or on Zoom or some permutation of that.